Here we go, Cassandra Beaugrand. This is the heat, one of three. She's in lane four, the fastest lane. Not the best start, if I'm honest. This will be a measured performance, I think, by Cassandra. She'll definitely be looking at her competitors, but also just wanting to do enough to qualify for the final. Oh, she's got a lovely stroke. She's already one, two body lengths ahead of some of the competitors here. Such a smooth stroke, hard on the turn, but no data for this race. Oh, she's on the lane rope, she's swimming very, very well. There's an empty lane next to her, so that's good, just slightly less wash. If you think today there's two heats and three finals, that's a thousand meters of swimming. So it's actually quite a lot of swimming at threshold. Dare I say a double threshold day? <laughs> Again, great underwater work. What's interesting here is Cassandra's actually joint first. Really not really kicking her legs at all, saving those for the bike and run. Gonna be a long day for her. Now what I find fascinating about Super Tri E is it's not just the swim, not just the bike, not just the run, it's the transitions. And when we talk about the transitions, okay, it's not jumping on your bike, it's how explosive they are popping out the water, that energy, how quickly they put their hat and goggles in the hat and goggle bin. Um, you can really see some urgency in athletes, and I think whether it's a heat or a final, that is absolutely crucial that the athletes have that urgency. So let's see, cast out the water, strong push up. Hat, goggles off, in the hat. Yep, she's not even looking around. She looks fluid. Oh, someone has forgot to take their hat and goggles off. They just lost three seconds there. That is absolutely a schoolboy error. Nice, look at that, smooth. Didn't even touch her feet and her feet were in. Her... Okay, we've got Vicky Holland riding two away from her. Okay, now you can see that laser call. Vicky Holland is in a very big gear. She's a rocking and a rolling. Cass is straight up to the power she wants to hold. Oh, there's an athlete at the end, hasn't got her feet in. It's these crucial moments. It's not just the transition, it's the first two, three hundred meters of the bike. You change the order a little bit, you start with the mats and then the icing on the cake will be our ladies later on in the final. So, till. Now this is a real split race. You can see the athletes, all they're focusing on is their power in the top left-hand corner on Zwift. But also on your right, you have that screen which has everyone's watts per kilo. So they'll be seeing if they're closing or being distanced by certain athletes. Vicky Holland, such an experienced racer. An Olympic medal in Rio. Um, she, took a, um, she stepped away from the sport to, to have her first child with Reese, her husband, who's also the British head coach but she's come back with a vengeance. She's had some bad luck this year with illness, traveling to races. She's riding very well, 245 watts. Wow, Cassandra, 280 watts. She looks massively in control. She really, really does. Hasn't got out the saddle once. But if Vicky doesn't make it, it's just, yeah, good, yeah. Oh wow, so now Cass is on the cobbles, so the actual tracks trainer will be vibrating as she is riding on them. It has that real world feel, it really is an amazing bit of kit. Look at that, she hasn't dropped below 270 watts. This is a heat, this is such a measured effort from her. She's not really looking at the screen now. It'll be interesting, she's actually got a water bottle. She's the only athlete here whose water bottle is insulated. So she has got ice cold water in there, probably in a um, sort of carbohydrate drink, because she's not just thinking about this performance, she's thinking about the next four races ahead of her. Again, 
looks totally in control. She can see on the screen no one is near her. She really is riding very well. She's got a seven second lead now. The thing that struck me though is that transition was absolutely sublime. The way she jumped on her bike, her feet were straight into her cycling shoes and she was in absolute total control. Now she's having a drink. She's relaxing a bit, but she's still riding at 260 watts. Now the actual watt number isn't the pure measure, it's the watts per kilo. So someone who's slightly heavier has to push a higher watts per kilo, so they have to push more watts. You can see the athlete to her right of her is out the saddle, rocking and rolling. Cass is just driving down from the hips, looking very, very, very controlled. I think if she does the work in this first heat, um, the next race, she will be in control because it's the pursuit start. So she can dive in and know she has a lead. It's much nicer to be in control of the race. This is really setting Cass up for a great, great day here. What's interesting is she has all the all media around her. She's got um, everyone just focusing on her. She's not even lifting her eyes. She is really, in, oh, she's looking at me now. I don't know what to do. Now she's laughing. Oh my God. Oh, this, is a, this is a different Cassandra Beau Grant from 2023. Let me tell you that. A good winter's work really, really well. I can see behind her, there's Jack Maitland, one of the British coaches. I'm keeping an eye on her. We've got Beth Potter's husband as well. Um, he's looking at Vicky Holland quite intensely. Um, now he's looking at Beth. I mean, sorry, Cassandra. What's interesting is I had breakfast with him this morning, and this is a, um, because Abu Dhabi got cancelled. The Super Tri E is a massive performance marker for Beth Potter. So to go against the world number two, the lady who is one of the favourites to win uh, the Paris Test event, Cassandra Beaugrand, he'll be watching her just as much as he'll be watching um, Beth Potter as well. Nicky Holland is really looking focused. Really interesting. This does not apply yet. Everybody's putting in the work 100%, 110%. Yeah, well, that's, that's the beauty of it, right? So this is really like a free, uh, free competition. It's like a swim. You have to be all around the bike. Swim by Prana, so there's no hiding behind somebody's back. And I just do the wheel. So, yeah, it's definitely. You gotta push the bike, you gotta push the run. So, you just gotta do all three. See, Akas is actually riding at quite a high cadence. I would say she's riding at over 90 RPM a minute. Again, that's the best way to ride, especially when you've got three more races ahead of you. I think she's getting towards the end of the bike now. But yeah, so now with Dominica Pesh like uh, in the number two, so we know Dominica from also from our championship series before. So she's here with us also. Okay, so wow, someone had an amazing bike there. They have one of the uh, German athletes, jumping on the, on the Tanya Newbert. She really biked very, very well there. She caught probably a 10, 15 second deficit to Cassandra Beaugrant. Look at those long legs. Cass is really running well on that treadmill. You know, this is just the stepping stone. This is just the, uh, the process for her to get to the final. Vicky Holland as well, she's really running well. She's got one, two, three. Let's see Vicky Holland actually jump on this treadmill. Come on, Vicky, get those cadence up. Cass's long legs doing well. This is a great race here from the European athletes. Again, Cass just looks in total control here. Not panicking. She knows the race is to come later. Okay, they're still running 3.14 a K. Cass is 3.20 a K. What's great is they can see the avatars on the screen. Cass is, this is some fantastic running by these ladies. All we need to do is get to the next round 
and then do it all again and it's all about recovery. This is all Cass needs to do is get in the final using as least amount of energy as possible. The fact they're in the first heat is absolutely fantastic. German athletes have really wintered well, I will say that. Cass raced earlier this year and got beat by... Um, Again, all the, all the coaches, Federation coaches have moved across to look how the athletes are, are running. Becky Holland looks like she's suffering. It is stifflingly hot in here. I've actually got shorts and t-shirt on. And it's that humidity, it really gets the back of your throat. <laughs> nine o'clock and we're here till nine o'clock tonight. <laughs> I can see two of our sport, the e sport. Sandra has just taken the lead now. They have 400 meters to run. It's not about sprinting to the line. It's about now she's already thinking about setting her bike up to have another smooth transition. Um, getting her goggles ready um, as well. Might be quite nice in the second race to have some company. First and second automatically qualify for the final. So it'll be really, really good to see her just nail that automatic. Uh, you can see now Cass is relaxing a lot more than the early part of the run. I think that surprised her to come off the bike in second. I think she's definitely slowing down. She is not running at 100% here. These athletes are looking for a one-two. So as much as the, the heats are two triathlons, the middle part, so Cass is jumping off there. Right, she's getting her shoes off straight away, setting her transition up. She's rolling her tongs all the way back, having hydrating straight away. There's definitely no urgency, but she's not messing around. Okay, she's done that. The other athletes are still racing. Cass has got the entourage following her. She's having a little jog, shaking out. She'll be happy with that performance. That'll give her a one or two second head start. But more importantly, two athletes are ahead of the rest of the pack. So now she can be in total control and relax on that second race. Now she's making sure she's in the right gear. She's setting her transitions up. That was her Achilles heel last year when she raced Beth Potter. That was the difference between um, winning the race or not. This year, obviously, they are racing for a world title. She uses elastic bands to hook her shoe to her bike, so they are parallel with the floor. She's got those nice, big, open shoes so she can get her feet in straight away. Vicky Holland looked like she had a tough day. Okay. Cass is up, going straight to the fluid. Really, really important. You need to start thinking about the next race and then the final later on today. Five minutes or so. Five minutes, not too much. But as you mentioned, we should not talk that much. Same thing the words. It's interesting, some of the athletes are on their bikes, spinning their legs. Cass is already, because she didn't go full gas on the run, she could warm down a little bit to get ready for this race. She's walking back to her swim spot. Cass has already got a hat on, she is ready to go. The other women are setting up their bikes. Things like this, I know she's been practicing in the winter with her coach, Gavlar. Ah, service is resumed. 
I think Cass just wants to get this second race done, get back to her hotel, focus about this afternoon. They've got three minutes to go, plenty of time for the women. Cass knows she's got time, she's going back just to check, double check her bike. Just drying her face again, calm and collective. Goggles on, game face back on. She just needs to get her head in the game for another 15 minutes, 12 minutes, and then she'll be ready to go. So, how does the pursuit format start? There is a red light at every lane. When your light turns green, you go. The fastest person goes first, and there's a time deficit to every athlete behind them. This is where Cass really excels. When everyone's tired, she's just got such an efficient swim stroke that really, really does benefit her. Oh, she's playing with the cameramen now. Every athlete has a different way of themselves getting ready. Vicky Holland's moving around, keeping that body moving. She doesn't want to stiffen up. Jogging on the spot. Cass has just got her goggles on, stood in front of her lane, getting ready. And we need the music to cut now because no one can hear anything. Again, the head. Oh, Vicky Holland's got so much energy, so much elasticity. About 60 seconds to go here. Forty-five seconds to go. That's not for everyone to start. That's just the fastest finisher from the first heat. Oh, there, Cassandra's just focusing on that red light. As soon as it turns green, she'll be taking a run, dive, 200 meters. Got 19 seconds to go. I think the top trump Cass has in the heats is her run. She knows she always has that extra gear. She's a 903, 3,000 metre runner. I don't know how that happened, but someone dived in in front of her. Look at that. Cass got that long, smooth stroke again. Really, really looking well. Okay, there's three of them dived in within five seconds. Two automatic select, two automatically qualify for the final. And then it's the four fastest losers from all the heats. I think if you've had a bad race in the first round, it's going to play on your mind because you're already against it. Cass is pulling out a lead again, just like she did in the first race. Again, she's swimming on the lane rope, further away from her competitor. It's a really interesting to watch her swim here. Morning, morning. OK, 
okay, we're coming to the end of the swim now. Cass has pulled out a nice little lead. Again, look at that urgency. Still got to work on that. Pat goggles in the bin. German athlete has lost some time there, but that was expected. But she rode so well to come off the bike ahead of Cass. As I say, the German athletes have wintered so well. I think a, a Euro, an Olympics in Europe really brings the best out of the athletes. Again, a great transition from Cass. So different from the 2023. She's got that high cadence, really spinning those legs. Just looking down at her watts per kilo. Should have been told what to do. Morning, morning, how you doing? Do you have, do you have time for a coffee today or no? Oh, for all. Well, I'm doing that bloody, all the, um, what are they called? Um, Cigna stuff. Yeah, no, I will. Ah, oh, so that doesn't work on my computer. Ah, oh, it is working now, my computer. No, it's, 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 it's Oh, okay. It's different to last year. Last year's one was good. I like the one with the raw data, that we had it along the top. Yeah, I mean, it was still a, it just, it, 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 it crashes from time to time. I, I guess it's still working on it, right? Yeah, yeah. Because Rift has been not very supportive in running different, uh, did you meet? Oh, I can't. I'm on. I'm on microphone, so I, can't, I don't ask these questions. Yeah, I had a couple of beers yesterday and, and uh, hang around here, etc. Yeah. In a very good position. Oh, good. Right, I'm going to do some more. This is for the other stuff. But yeah, I'll be able to grab a coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a nice coffee. Look, I bought a pair of shorts. Look at my socks. I'm, I, I've, I've, I've never had socks. Look, they're those, um, yeah, the girls' socks. They're not girls' socks. Yes! I feel, so, I feel so feminine. When Kelly sees them, she's going to go, what have you got on? <laughs> no, I got, I, got, I got black and white zebra socks, so they are black and white. <laughs> Again, Vicky Holland out the saddle. That heart rate spike in this heat and humidity is wasting energy. As well, you did. Let's not forget to mention that. Yes. No, I forget to mention that. I think it's really racing now. Beat me in work, right? So that was a beautiful race. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. Has Cass been caught again by the German athlete? To a point, they only need to do enough to get first and second in the race. They really do not need to do anything more. Cass is in first spot here. Looks like they're riding together, but they've got a massive gap, so it's just about making it first or second. Energy conservation from now on, that's the goal. Thinking about getting the fluids in, keeping the core temperature down. You can see under the bikes how much water and sweat has come off them. It really is a hot, oppressive heat here. Must be on the cobbles. These tracks trainers rocking and rolling, looking really, really, really good. These two athletes in the heats are riding really, really well. But a comfortable lead. First two make the final automatically. Just all about looking after the body. Again, Cass is looking around, drinking, staying hydrated. Uh, I can see it on the screen, right? It looks a lot like Tendon Oil on F1. Three percent of Bob Brown on the bike. So she's taking the lead, putting the hammer down on the bike. And as we saw in the first round, might be the first one onto the track wall. Our Cass is riding at 250 watts, 90 RPM. The temperature now is 
could be, right? Yesterday was much more warmer, or just me feeling it, or? Man, I think yesterday we still had the Olympic team here. Oh yeah, well, the, the divers, like, if we want to keep them warm, we have the jumps. Okay, what's interesting actually is Cass has not done up her cycling shoes. She doesn't need to. Again, thinking about the next the next line, the next transition. But still not here. Again, their distance at the front is a countdown system. Again, it is so interesting. We have all the other coaches um, in the grandstand cra crowding back, crowding around, looking at Beth. We've got the British triathlon coaches. You've got the husbands and partners of the other athletes. He's the one. He's the one to watch. Yeah. He's the one who made you dare jump off the three meters. Well, I think also. I think when you just look at all these athletes, their body positions, their posture. Their facial expressions, you can really see how relaxed Cassandra Beau Grant is. I think this is very much a process for her. Tick the box, getting in the final. You can see the German athlete has already taken one foot out. Cass is looking around, seeing where she's at. But the way Cass does her transition, she doesn't need to stop pedaling to take her feet out. She can just smoothly take them out as she wants to. Before the finals or during the finals? Uh, definitely, it was a, it was a cool, uh, cool show from up there, so I hope uh, we're going to be up there. Again, look at the speed. Cass is moving to the tread well quicker. This is not a race now. These women, do, Cass is an experienced super tri e racer. She does not need to go hard now. It's all about making the final. The two of them are head and shoulders above the rest of the athletes in the heat. Does winning give you an advantage with a lane draw? No, it does not. If anything, she probably doesn't want to start the final next to Beth Potter, because in the swim, Beth can get on her. She can use her as a marker, as a slipstream. But again, I'm very, very impressed here with these athletes. Sandra's got that long, rangy motion. Vicky Holland is coming off into fourth place here. Tough day for her after all that illness. Moment, like wow, these little things that like, really make a huge difference because uh, it's really like the technique how you how you start like how you start running your belt right like uh, it's been so we know like the Cass has that very non uh, non expressive face <laughs> when she's running when she's in control I've seen that in training I've seen that in racing she's already thinking about recovery she's already thinking about getting that core temperature down. Let's see how fast these women are racing. Again, 3.30 a K in total control. Got a big lead on third. About 600 meters to run. This race isn't about winning. Both these women are absolute control. All, all the athletes are doing now is looking at that third position. All they need to do is finish one second in front of it. Lane draw means nothing here. Cass is doing her trademark shake of the arms. She does that when she's trying to relax, when she's trying to get her mind back in the game. Never settle for less. So what they need is a little bit of DJ to encourage them. something special about watching athletes really hone their skills in. Something special. Considering you're, you're running at close to the three minute K pace, so relaxed. Again, is there an advantage to be in the first heat? Absolutely, because there's three more heats to go. By the time the third heat starts, Cass will be back in her hotel room, fueled up, had some protein for recovery, done her warm down, got out of this hot, oppressive atmosphere in here. So stiflingly hot and humid. You can see the sweat beading off the athlete's foreheads. Such a measured performance from Cass. 
Am I doing Beth as well? Just Cass. No? Just Cass. I've just been told by the executive producer that I'm doing an amazing job, so I appreciate that, everyone listening. Thank you. <laughs> Oh wow, this is, this is amazing. I mean, you can see now, Cass is literally jogging. Her leg speed compared to Vicky Holland, an Olympic medalist. Cass is not worried about winning. It's all about conserving energy. All she needs to do is cross the line in first or second. No medals in the heat. All about moving to the next round. Again, no messing. She's straight off the, off the, uh, the treadmill. Water, done. She wants to get on her bike as soon as possible for a warm down. Very, very efficient that. What a performance. I think it's going to be really interesting. She set that stage up. She's walking out, out the arena. She's got everything that she needs. Oh, what's ironic and interesting is Beth Potter is in the same lane as her um, for round two. So, yeah, and here we go. That was the end of the, the heat. Cassandra Beau Grant looks so smooth, so easy. Can she do it in the final? Let's find out.